My name is Bruce. I've been working bar for almost 40 years now. In that time, I've learned a trick or two that I'd like to pass on to you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We've got a lot of ground to cover. We'll look at some of the forgotten classics and some unusual new tasty creations right for any occasion. Cheers. Welcome. It's good to see you again. I got a little story to tell you here. It's about a customer and a friend of mine, Rob. He came into the bar one night sicker than a dog. I don't even know why he was there. He should have been at home nursing himself better. But no, no. He came out in the dead of winter, coughing and wheezing and sneezing all over my bar. I looked at him and said, what's the matter with you? He looks at me and said, Bruce, can you fix me better? I said, well, yeah, I can fix you better. Hmm. First thing that came to mind to help him was brandy. If you're sick and you're gonna drink, then brandy is what you should drink because brandy, unlike any other liquor, will actually warm your blood. Vodka, scotch, rum, gin. While it appears to warm you up, it just doesn't. Oh, it might work for a short time, but in the long run, it won't do what brandy can do. Let's say you're lost and stranded up in the deep freeze north. I don't know, let's say somewhere in the Yukon. <laughs> and you drink anything but brandy, you're gonna freeze to death until one of those rescue dogs appear. You know the ones I mean, the St. Bernard. They're the ones that always have those little barrels or casks tied around their neck marked XXX. Well, that cask is filled with brandy. So I thought, well, what can I make uh, with brandy to help my friend Rob? Then it dawned on me. Hmm a hot blueberry tea. It's a calm, warming, sweet, delicious comfort that whether you're sick or not is going to make things all better for you with its aromatic fruitiness and unmistakable flavor. It'll pleasure and warm all your senses right down to your toes. And that's what we're going to make today, a blueberry tea. Grand Marnier is an orange flavored liqueur produced from a blend of cognac, orange peel and spices. Amaretto is a sweet almond flavored Italian liqueur that has been in production since about 1900. 28% alcohol by volume, the company describes its amaretto as an infusion of apricot kernel oil with alcohol, burnt sugar, and pure essence of 17 herbs and fruits. This amaretto contains no almonds and is nut free. Therefore, I guess it's safe for people with nut allergies. Okay, we got our boiling water going. First thing I like to do is uh, get my glass. I'm going to use a little brandy snifter here. And uh, I actually like to heat the glass up. Because if you don't heat the glass up, you're just going to get a kind of a warm drink. We want a hot, hot blueberry tea. Okay, then we need to uh, put a little tea bag in. I like to use uh, orange pico. Um, it's, it's, it's a good tea and uh, get our hot water in there. Ooh, that's hot. And we want to let that steep for 10 minutes or so. Let me tell you a little bit more about that night. Like I said, Rob, well, he was really, really sick. Then he whips out this bottle of cough syrup. He says, can you, can you use this in your drink? I said, well, sure, but maybe you should sign a waiver first. <laughs> he laughs and coughs all over me. But I ended up making him a blueberry tea with cough syrup in it. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that, but it fixed him up right away. He never felt so good in days. Well, this next step is uh, optional, but uh, if we take a little lemon here and uh, Cut her, cut her up nice and fine here. First thing we've got to do is get rid of our hot water. That, uh, that, glass, is, uh, that glass is ready. And we're just going to scour. And then we just take it and dip it into sugar. A lot of people don't like the sugar, but hey, sugar's fine. Now we need our booze. We've got Grand Marnier, one ounce. And we've got Amaretto, one ounce. And our tea's ready, so let's pour some tea. About three ounces. 
three to six ounces thereabouts. And to top it off, I've got a little orange wheel. We're just gonna drop right in there. Oh, smells awesome. And tastes even better. Oh, that's good. And what a lovely color. And you're probably wondering why they call it blueberry tea when there's no blueberries in it. I think it's a, I think it's a citrusy in the, and the, um, the aroma and the, it doesn't, there's no stinking blueberries and I have no idea why they call it blueberry tea, but it tastes good. Ah yeah, blueberry tea. Equally as good without cough syrup. <laughs> anyway, I got one more thing to show you here. This is awesome. To commemorate making Grand Marnier for 150 years, Grand Marnier Cuvée Special. I've been hanging on to this bottle since, well, since about 1982 I bought this. We used to sell it for $6 an ounce, and I, and I wondered, well, what's all the hubbub? So one night, Closed up shop, one dim light, poured myself a regular Grand Marnier, poured myself a Grand Marnier Cuvée Special, and let me tell you, there's no comparison. This Grand Marnier Cuvée Special, well, it's made up with uh, 50 year old cognacs inside. Love this finished frosted glass bottle with the, the hand painted Art Nouveau decorations on it. The soft cognac forward liqueur is, is, is rich on the nose with background notes of cacao, cinnamon, and other spices. The flavor, well, is bitter orange enriched by notes of coffee, honey, bitter almond, and spices. The finish, the finish is long and complex. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Be happy, be safe, and please drink responsibly. There you go. Put it on my tab. My tab? Who are you? that's what we're going to make today. And that's what we're going to make today. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, please subscribe. Click that button, man. <laughs>